In my last video on feature flag, you would have understood conceptually what are feature flags, when to use these feature flags, and what are the different types of feature flags which we can leverage. We also saw some of the disadvantages of feature flags. In this video, I'm picking up one particular feature flag which I have been like pretty impressed with their strategies which are very helpful in rolling out production projects. FF4J is nothing but feature flipping for Java, which is a feature flag. The different features of FF4J include feature toggling, role-based toggling, strategy-based toggling, monitoring, audit trial, web console, and also you can choose the type of database you want to persist those data or the feature flag information. In addition to it, it helps in tons of use cases such as A-B testing, blue-green deployments, canary releases, dark launches, graceful degradation of your service, or even circuit breakers. You can create custom rules and strategies using FF4J. In this video, I'm going to show by picking up one particular strategy and also I'll show using the web console how you can enable, add features, disable and stuff like that. I'm creating a Spring Boot project because that's easy. So I've created a project with package, Comtech primers, FF4J Spring Boot example. If you want to take the project, it's there in GitHub. I will leave the link in the description below. I've added the dependencies for Spring Web and Spring Actuator and I have downloaded and kept it ready. So it's a bare minimum project, nothing else is there. It's just like plain old project. So let's start off with adding the dependencies for the FF4J. There are two dependencies which we can add for the FF4J usage. One is the classic Spring Boot dependency which FF4J provides. It's called FF4J Spring Boot Starter. I'm using the 1.9 version. The other one is also FF4J Web we can leverage it for creating and using the web console. There is the latest version which is available uh, recently, so I can use that. So I'm using Spring Boot starter version, which is 1.9, which is the latest, and FF4J web, which is again the latest, 2.0.0. Let's start straight away with creating some configs for the FF4J to be enabled. I'm going to create an FF4J config. This is going to be our main class, which will be used in our feature toggling. So I'm going to create a configuration, an auto configuration, and I'll create a bean, which is our main bean, which is FF4J. Let me re-import the Maven project so that I can see the classes here. So it got re-imported. Let me see. Yeah, this is the FF4J. So I'm going to create the FF4J object. So ideally, what we want is FF4J equal to new FF4J and we need to return this object. We need to also customize, add features to this object so that we can use it later. So the way FF4J works is during the startup or the registration time, we add the features. You can use a YAML configuration, read all the data from the YAML and then configure it that way as well, or you can do it manually. Uh, there are a lot of examples in the GitHub page of FF4J. You can go and like look at the samples, whatever they have provided here. I'm going to show using a custom option where I'm going to add a feature here and we can inject it into this variable here. So I'm going to create a new feature called as, let's call this particular feature as, so I'm going to create a string variable so that we can use it everywhere. So I'm going to call this feature as hello feature. So I'm calling this as hello feature because I want to flip between hello world and hello tech primers. That's why I'm call the, calling this as a hello feature. So the way we do it is we create a feature. Feature is a class in FF4J core, so you can directly use it. So I'll just say feature hello feature equal to new feature of, and you can provide the name of that particular feature so that you can use multiple features. I can even show like adding multiple features. For now, I'm just going to add one. And you can enable or disable this feature. You can just say hello feature dot set enable and then you can pass it as true or false. In fact, we can have the config, like I said, you can have configurations injected, read those configurations and then set those values here while we build this particular object. For now, I'm just hard coding it, but in production, don't do hard coding stuff. Expose it via a configuration and then use it here. Once the feature is enabled, I want to provide a strategy. This is the beauty of FF4J. I have used Toggle Z as well earlier. 
but then I found FF4J to be much more flexible and it fits majority of the use cases which I've seen in production. A classic example would be, I want to release my code after let's say a particular time. For example, I want to release my code at 12 uh, midnight. Right now the time is 11.53, I want to release my code at uh, a particular time. So what I can do, I can create a strategy and I can assign that strategy to that particular feature. So I can do set strategy, so which is nothing but the flipping strategy and I want to create a strategy. So this strategy I need to create. So I'm going to create a new strategy called as release dates flip strategy because I want to flip my feature after a particular time. So if I go to this interface, which is nothing but the flipping strategy, you can see the different strategies which are available within FF4J. So you can see that there is a blacklist strategy, client filter strategy, you can do a dark launch strategy. You can also have an expression based flipping strategy, office hours. This is another strategy which I like because I want to like enable a feature during only a particular office time. You can have office hours strategy. It has support for even public holidays, special openings, and also you can override the dates if you want. So I'm going to just leverage the release date flipping strategy, it will leverage a particular date time pattern. So this is the date time pattern it is expecting. So I will create a date time pattern and I will pass it to this particular strategy. Right now I did not have anything, but let me pass that in the config here. So I'm going to pass my uh, strategy with a particular date and time. So the date is going to be 2023, month is five, and then the date is going to be, I think it will cross uh, 19th, right? and i'll say it's going to be midnight which is 00, .00. i don't know if we can complete the code within five minutes but let's try hard so i'm just saying enable the feature only after midnight now that the hello feature is ready we also need to add that hello feature to the ff4j object so we can do a ff4j dot create feature because we are creating this particular feature and then we can assign that particular hello feature to it so we created the hello feature here we added a strategy to that hello feature and then we are adding the hello feature into the ff4j object that's what we are doing here so we are injecting that into the config now to quickly verify what we can do we can quickly create a um, service to see if this strategy is working so i'll create a ff4j service I'm just going to annotate it with service so that it runs every time. I'll create a command line runner because I want to like quickly run the project. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to create a FF4J object. I'll do an auto wiring of the FF4J object which we created and I'm going to check if the FF4J object has a feature called as hello feature. So we created something called hello feature from the FF4J config right. So I'm just saying is there anything called hello feature? Let me make this as public because I made it as private. Let me make it as public. So I'm checking if this particular feature exists. If this feature exists, I'm going to return or maybe I'll just print out saying hello tech primers. If the feature is not enabled, then I'll say hello world. Now I want to do this every few seconds because I, I know that it's going to trigger at a particular time. So I'll do a true so that it keeps on running and then I will enable this to print every, so I'll just say thread.sleep for 500 milliseconds. So let me start this file quickly so that we know it's going to hit our 12 o'clock margin. Right now the time is 11.59. So this project will keep on running. So if you see here, 
So the application is up. You can see that there is a hello world. And in fact, I should have added a timestamp, but for simplicity, let's add it later. But for now, I will just show a quick view. If the time crosses 12, we are going to get hello world because we enabled a release date strategy, which will leverage the date time. And then it will flip the feature based on that particular timestamp. So every five seconds, we are printing hello world and we are checking if the feature is enabled or not. So this dot check verifies if that particular feature is enabled or not. Right now, the release strategy would have got triggered from the config here, which says that enable it only at like May 19th and then the time should be like midnight, right? And if you see here, right at the clock of 12, we got Hello Tech Primers and now our feature got enabled. This is an amazing strategy when you have a code drop and you should have the code drop working from a particular date. It will be very helpful because it just uses the release date strategy and flips the feature whenever that particular date has crossed. So I have done tons of releases in my experience where we have to enable the feature on a particular date. And this is an amazing feature which will help us in doing that. You can make this configurable and you should be able to change that configuration dynamically so that you don't have to do code changes again. So now that we have added the FF4J very easily, how do I make the configuration change or how do I control the whole FF4J via a web console? So FF4J provides a web console similar to Toggle Z. We will have to add some configuration for it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add some config, some configuration for the FF4J. So let's do FF4J web console configuration. Let's not touch the FF4J config because we know that's uh, working. Let me add a um, configuration for the FF4J web console. I want to secure the web console, so I will enable web security, right? And also this is going to be like an auto configuration class. So I'll just annotate it with auto configuration, add configuration, which is auto configuration. I also need to run this after the FF4J config because I want to have the FF4J class. So I want to make sure that the web console configuration runs after the FF4J con config, right? Because I want to inject the FF4J here and use it. So I want to make sure that is taken care. I want to add some Spring security uh, filter. So what I'm doing is I am going to add a CSRF disabled request and then I want to authorize, authorize my request. So I'm just adding a HTTP filter as a B. So I'm injecting HTTP security and then changing some authentication mechanism by providing a form which is going to be a user login form with the username and password. Now I also need to add the username and password for it. So I'll leverage the classic Spring security. So in Spring security, we have something called user details service. This is a recent change in this latest Spring security where you can use the user details service. I'm going to use an in-memory user details service so that I can pass uh, a user called admin and also the password called admin. I'm using a encoder, B encryption encoder. So what I can do, this B encryption password encoder needs to be injected as well. So I'll just say B I will just create an instance of the bcrypt password encoder like this. Now I have created a new user called admin and provided roles for user and admin. And we will leverage this for securing the web console. So I can log in using admin and admin. Don't do this in production. In production, obviously you will be plugged into your identity provider. So you can leverage that as well for the web console. The next one is obviously adding the web console itself. Let's add the web console uh, FF4J specific dispatcher servlet. We need to add a dispatcher servlet uh, because FF4J requires one public FF4J dispatcher servlet. And I'll provide the FF4J object here. We can do a new FF4J dispatcher servlet. And then set the FF4J object here. So we can use the same object. So the dispatcher servlet is going to use the same object. So we are good here. So I'll inject the bean and also I'm having a conditional 
on missing beam. So if let's say this particular beam is not there, we are going to get an error because this is important for the web console to function. So the next option would be to register this dispatcher servlet into our Spring Boot servlet. So I'm going to use the add bean uh, for the Spring Boot servlet. There should be something called a servlet registration bean. Yeah. So we can leverage the servlet registration bean and inject our dispatcher servlet there. So we can do ff4j dispatcher servlet. And we can create a new servlet registration bean and provide the ff4j dispatcher servlet. Also, we are going to say use that ff4j dispatcher servlet only on the path for our web console. <clears throat> so we are saying ff4j web console will be in the path ff4j web uh, console slash star. This is the default path for the web console. So I'm using the same. Let's look at what we did in this class. We created a HTTP security filter, which enables authentication. We also created an in-memory user detail service, which has roles and username and password to provide authentication. We created a FF4J dispatcher servlet and we injected our FF4J object, which we created using the FF4J config. Using the dispatcher servlet, we are redirecting our request to the FF4J web console. So I think we have done everything what we require here. We don't need any properties because everything is all injected in this uh, class. Of course, you can offload many of these into the application YAML or the properties, but I've just shown you how it is all working under the hood, how it is all injected into the Spring Boot application. Now, let me check if something else is missing. I think we all are good. We have hello tech primers. Um, I think we can restart the service to see how the web console looks like. So the application is up. Let me go to the browser. We can go to localhost slash ff4j web console. The moment I hit ff4j web console, it's redirecting me to the login page. We created a username called admin and the password is admin. So I'm just going to use it. Cool, we are logged in now. So this shows the console of the FF4J. So you can see there are different options like home, features, properties, monitoring, settings, etc. Uh, it also shows what kind of store we are using. We can also configure the type of store that I forgot to mention, but by default, it's using the in-memory store. That's why it is in-memory here. If you configure it to a database, you can do that uh, in the FF4J config. Here we can do that. We can create a store and then inject the store into the FF4J config. We just created an in-memory store. We can also do import, export of the config, etc. And we can look at the features from the feature tab here. Uh, notice that we have a feature which is hello feature, which is our feature which we created to flip at around 12 o'clock, right? And also you notice that you can have this disabled. So here what I did, I disabled the feature flag, right? I can do that via the console. Now, if I go back, you can see that hello world is getting printed. Ideally, it should have printed hello tech primers, but now it's getting printed with hello world because I disabled the feature. Now I can come here, enable the feature. I should see the hello tech primers coming in, right? Uh, I think these are logs from the UI and see that hello tech primers is coming in. So these are, I think the logs from the UI, which are getting printed here, but uh, this is how you can control dynamically the feature flag from the console. Generally, we don't control the feature flags via a web console like what I'm doing. We offload this to a centralized system or we host these feature flags in a central system and then we control via that. But FF4J even provides that option where you can store the data into a database and you can use the application to host the UI part. So you can have a centralized service using which we can control and there could be different services which we can used to leverage the same data from the same database. There are other features like creating new feature flags. You can also have a copy option where you can copy the existing feature flag and into a new one. There's also toggle groups, etc. There are tons of features which I'm not showing in this particular video, but take a look at those by going to the uh, GitHub repository of FF4J and do try it on your own you can use the REST API of FF4J to hit directly instead of using the web console. And you can automate those as well. As always, the code is available in the GitHub repository. You can take it from there. I hope this particular video was useful. Do let me know if you want me to make a video on any specific topic. As always, if you like the video, go ahead and like it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to it. Meet you again in the next video. 
Thank you very much.